Insert greater than, less than, or equal to between each pair of fractions. For A, we are comparing one half to two thirds. So, as we can see from the diagram here, this is one half. Below the block that's been divided into thirds, there's one third, and there's a second third. So two thirds is clearly bigger than one half. However, if we didn't have this diagram, what we would have to ask ourselves is how can we get 2 and 3 to have the same value? Or how can we get these two fractions to have the same denominator? Now the smallest number that 2 and 3 both fit into is 6. And we can easily see this by counting in 3s. 3, 6, then we say 2 also fits into 6. So that is our lowest common denominator. So times top and bottom by 3. Yeah, we times the bottom by 2, so we times the top by 2. And again, we can, we can see that 4 sixths is greater than 3 sixths. If we were to shade this in a diagram below, 1 half is equal to 3 sixths. Notice it is the same as what we got up there. And 2 thirds is equal to 4 sixths. Again, it is it's exactly the same, it's just broken up into more parts as what we got in our first original diagram. For B, we have 2 thirds compared to 3 quarters. There's 2 thirds and here's 3 quarters. 3 quarters is just a bit bigger. However, if we didn't have this diagram, we say 3 and 4. What is the smallest number that both of these can fit into? So, one way to do this is to look at our biggest number and say our multiples of that number are 4, 8, 3 doesn't fit into 8, next one is 12, now 3 fits into 12 4 times, so the smallest denominator that both can fit into is 12. We times 3 by 4, so we times 2 by 4 times the bottom by 3, so we times the top by 3. So yeah, again we get the answer that 9 twelfths, so 3 quarters, is bigger. And if we were to shade this in, the bottom diagram there has already been divided into twelfths. There we have 2 thirds, which is 8 twelfths. Notice it is exactly the same distance as the top one there, it's just been divided into more parts. And the bottom one, 9 twelfths, just goes 1 twelfth further, which again is the same as the top answer over there. So, if we didn't have these diagrams, all that we would have to do is write each of the fractions over the same denominator, the lowest common denominator, write equivalent fractions, and then compare. That is what we're going to do now for 2. So, we're going to compare 2 thirds and 4 fifths. Different denominators means that we must find a common denominator. Let's find the lowest one. So for 5, we can write the multiples. We have 5, 10, 15. And there we go. We know that 3 fits into 15 and 5 fits into 15. Times the bottom by 5. Times the top by 5. Times the bottom by 3. Times the top by 3. There we have our answer, 12 fifteenths is greater. If we look at the next one, looking at quarters and fifths, again, the bigger denominator is 5, so we have 5, 10, 15. 4 doesn't fit into any of those numbers. 20, yes, 4 fits into 20. So, tw so we're going to write both fractions over 20 times by 5, times by 5, we have 15 twentieths, times by 4, times by 4, so we've got 16 twentieths, which is the bigger one. Now we have 7 and 4 as denominators, so I'm going to look at the bigger denominator, 7, and write out. What 7, then we have our next number, which is 14, 4 doesn't fit into that, then 21, 4 doesn't fit into that, then 28, yes, 4 does fit into that, 7 times. 
So, times by 4 times by 4. Now we have times by 7 times by 7. So, 24 over 28 is the bigger one. Now, do you notice that for each one of these, 3 times 5 gives 15, 4 times 5 is 20, and 7 times 8 is 28. So the lowest common denominator is actually the denominators multiplied with one another. However, let's look at this at these options. We've got quarters and sixths. So 4 times 6 is 24, so that is a common denominator. However, 6, 12 is the next multiple, and there we see 4 fits into 12. So the lowest common denominator is actually 12. So for A, what is the smallest number that both 4 and 6 can fit into? The answer is 12. So let's rewrite them both as something over 12. We times both top and bottom by 3. We times top and bottom by 2. And yeah, we see that this option is bigger. Let's move on to 4. Now our denominators are 6 and 9. Now 6 times 9 is 54. Let's see if we can get a smaller denominator that they both can fit into. Our multiples of 9 are 9, 18, and there we go on the very second one. 6 fits into 18 three times. So our lowest common denominator between 6 and 9 is 18 and not 54. And that actually makes our calculations a lot easier. We rewrite this as 18, we times by 3, we times by 3. We write this as 18, we double the bottom and we double the top. And 5 sixths is greater. For 5, our last question for this topic. Insert greater than, less than or equal to between each pair of fractions. So we're comparing 6 and 8. We have to find the lowest common denominator. So we... Let's use 8 because it's our biggest number. 8, 16, 24, and there we have it. 6 fits into 24, exactly 4 times, so that's our lowest common denominator. Times by 4, times by 4, times by 3, times by 3, so 7 over 8 is greater. If we look at B, we're going to use 12. We have 12. Then we get 24, then we get 36, and 9 fits into 36 exactly 4 times. So 36 is our lowest common denominator, times by 3, times by 3, we times by 4, and we times by 4, so 7 over 12 is greater. For C, we're going to use 10, so we say 10, and then 20, and there we have it. 20 is the lowest common denominator because 4 fits into 25 times, so we times top and bottom by 5. Yeah, we simply double. And 3 quarters is greater.